All right, so this is section, um, chapter one, section five for I am two, using the distributive property. So in this one, we're gonna go through um, first just how do I use the distributive property to factor? So that's our main idea or our question that we're kind of asking for this section. Um, so you have used the distributive property to multiply a monomial and a polynomial. You have worked back, um, you can work backwards to express a polynomial as a product of a monomial. Factor, um, as a product of a, a monomial factor and a pol polynomial factor. Sorry, I read that funny. Um, so here's an example. They're showing us um, 1.6w squared plus 6w equals 1.6w times w. Remember, there's two w's here, plus 6w. Um, so what it's showing us is there's kind of an extra w here for each. Um, and I'll point at this one instead. So they both have a w, at least one. And I can take that one and I can kind of pull it out and put it in the front. I'm undistributing it, kind of dividing it away. And I'm left with 1.6w and just 6. So we're going to put that in parentheses too because that might help in a picture. That's the one that we pulled out front. So it's, we're only left with a 6 here. So this is just an example. So let's look at the words um, or the steps. So steps to factor out the greatest common factor of um, a polynomial. So the first step is to factor each term. Um, and then the second step is to circle um, the common factors, right? Do, 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 circle common factors. The third step is to rewrite uh, each term, sorry. Rewrite each term using the GCF, or the greatest common factor. Sorry, that's really sloppy. Using G, C, F, which is what we just circled here, right? Common factors. Um, so we want the greatest common factor. And then the last one is use the distributive property. So these are the, the four steps for completing this process. As you get better at this idea, you won't necessarily do each and every one of these steps written out, but it's definitely a good idea to do them at first so you understand how we're getting the answers we're getting or why we're um, kind of pulling out certain pieces of, of these numbers. So the first thing we wanna do is factor each term. So remember, each term means there's 15w and we have negative 3v. Um, so we wanna factor this term. Um, so I, I want to break it down into its, its pieces. So I have 3 times 5 times w. Here are my factors. Um, I could also do 1 times 15, but in this case, 3 and 5 because I want something to match here for sure. Um, and then th for 3v, my factors for this would be 1 and 3. I don't have to write the 1, but I'll write the 3 and the v. Um, so then we want to circle our common factors. And I'm circling them like, like this. You could circle them like this if you wanted to. Just so that you know they're in common. They both have a 3 here. So this is the only thing they have in common is a 3. So this is what's going to go out in front is what I circle. This is my common factor. If I circled more than one thing, I would combine them. Okay, You basically combine them using a multiplication. In this case, this is my only common factor is 3. So I look at what I'm left with. I'm left with 5w. I had the minus sign, so I was kind of ignoring that for a moment. And I'm left with v. So now I factored out the 3. I divided it away. So we can also look at this and say 15 and 3 can both divide by 3. And w and v both can't divide by the same thing. So they, they get left w and v. But I can divide um, 15 by 3, and I get 5. If I divide 3 by 3, I get 1, which that, there's a 1 there. We just don't write 1v. But I need to show that I'm, I'm taking that 3 out. It's out in front now. I'm undistributing it. 
All right, so let's do the same thing here. We have 7ut, sorry, 7u squared, t squared. So that's going to be 7. It's 1 times 7, but we don't need to write the 1. Times u, times u, times t, times t. So we're just separating them out into the pieces. And now I have 21u um, t squared. So I'm using my little separator, my little colon. Um, so I have... 3 times 7 times u times t times t. And then I have u t for my last one. So remember, each one of these in between, so when we have the plus or the minus, that's a different piece. So it's a different term. All right, so now I have just u and just t at the bottom, like that. All right, so we're going to circle some like terms. So um, I see 7 and 7 here, but... I can only circle it if they all three have them in this case. So I only have to circle two here because we only have two terms. But once you start getting more terms than two, you have to remember every term has to have that number in it. So I can't circle the seven because this bottom one doesn't have a seven. But I can circle a U and I can circle a T because they all have a U and they all have a T. So this is what I'm going to put out in front. I'm pulling a U and a T out. I'm dividing by U and T. And what I'm left with is what's left here in the factors. So 7, U, and then the T on the end. So 7 times U times T, which is just 7, U, T. And then the second one, remember there's a plus sign here. Don't forget to put the plus sign in there. 3 times 7 times T, 21T. And then down here, there's nothing left over. Don't put 0. I'm dividing ut by ut. Anytime you divide a number by itself, even if it's a variable, you end up with 1. And it's negative 1 because this, there was a negative here. So don't forget that there's a negative sitting out there. So you could even write the negative 1 here if that helps. To make sure you remember that it's, it is, there is in fact a negative there um, to put it back in. All right. Then we put the parentheses in. So um, let's go ahead and do number 3. All right, so we have 12jk squared. So 12, um, we can actually break this down a little smaller because we could just go 2 times 6, or you could go 2 times 2 times 3. Um, the smaller you do the factors, the, the better you'll be able to, to match certain numbers. In this case, we don't necessarily need to break it down that small because um, it'll actually work out just fine. But I'm going to go ahead and break it down as small as I can just to practice that. We always want to break it down into prime numbers um, just to make sure that we can always match up everything that's possible to match up. Because sometimes like, if we left 2 times 3 as 6, then we wouldn't necessarily see that it maybe... it all the threes matched up or something along those lines if we didn't actually break it down. So just always break it down into the smallest factors that you can. Like that. All right, so we have J and then we have K and K. All right, this next one, we have J squared and K. So we have two times three for six. J times J for J squared. And then K for K. And the last one, we have two J squared, K squared. So we have a 2, and we have j, and j, we have k, and k. All right, so now we're going to circle our like terms. So they all have a 2 in them, so I can circle. They don't all have a second 2, only the, the first one here does, and they don't all have a 3, so I can't circle the 3s because, remember, they all have to have that term. But they do all have a j. They don't all have a second j, only the second and third one do. They all have a K, but only the first term and the last term there have a second K. So we can't circle it again. So now this is our common factor. We have 2 times J times K, which is just 2JK. That's the factor we're going to divide out. We're pulling that out. So now this first term, we have 2 times 3 times K. So we're just looking at what's left over. So 2 times 3 is 6, times k is 6k. This was all plus, by the way, so plus, plus. We're going to have pluses on here again. 
So now we have 3 and j left over. So 3j. And then in this one we have j, k left over. So plus j, k. Alrighty, so that was factoring um, using the four steps. Again, as you start to get more used to this, you may not necessarily need to use the four steps um, to do this, but it, it's definitely a nice practice so you make sure you're not missing any like terms. The main idea here is that you're pulling out the greatest common factor. So um, you're looking at all the pieces and what's the biggest number I can divide away from everything. So the biggest constant um, or coefficient, I'll say it that way because it's not necessarily a constant, it's a coefficient. Um, so in this case, I had a seven, I had a 21, but I had a one. That's why I didn't pull any numbers out. I didn't divide any numbers away. Um, and when you're looking at the variables, you're looking for actually the smallest number of variables, not the largest. It's a little kind of backwards from what you might think greatest common factor. Um, because if I go and say, oh, well, u squared, that's the, the most u's I have. I can take all of them. Well, I can only take one from this one because it only has one. And I can only take one from this term because it only has one. So we actually want to take the, the, the one with the least. So I can take one u out and then also t, so this one has t squared, this one has t squared, but this one only has t, so I can only take one t. So for the numbers, um, we want the greatest number that can divide into both. For the variables, we actually want the least exponent um, that, that we can take out of everyone. So if, if we had enough to take it, t squared out of everything, we would. So you wanna take the most you can, but it's not necessarily the largest one, um, which is kind of what we refer to when we think of greatest common factor. <coughs> All right, we're going to look at the next page here. Um, and this one is about grouping, factoring by grouping. Um, so we have um, what is factor by grouping. Um, a polynomial can be factored by grouping only if all of the following conditions exist. So there are four or more terms is the first piece. So there are four or more terms. So if there aren't four or more terms, we can use the previous method. But if there are four more terms, we want to factor by grouping. Um, terms also need to have a common, sorry, let me catch up, a common factor that can, oops, that can be grouped together. Sorry, together. I want to make sure I wasn't missing a word there. So they, they need to have some kind of common factor that we can group. Um, and then the last term is, or the last step really, or not step, sorry, condition, is um, that there are two common factors that are identical or additive inverses of each other. So two um, common factors that are um, either identical, identical or additive inverses, additive inverses. Um, Inverses. And additive inverse just means um, like negative 10x and positive 10x. Those are, they're, they're still identical. We would actually pull one of the negatives out to make them identical again. And um, so we can kind of fix that issue if we come across that. But um, this is what they mean by additive inverse. If they were identical, then maybe they'd both be plus 10x. So it just depends on the number there. So here's an example we have four terms ax plus bx plus y, ay plus by, so we can group them. So they just group the first two and the last two. So they, they group them with parentheses, and we want to group them in a way they're not always laid out as nicely as this. We want to group them in a way that there's something here that's in common. So in this case, we have x's in common, and this one we have y's in common. So now, if you notice the x is coming out, it's in the front, because they both have one. 
So I can divide it away, and I'm left with A and B. And then I'm going to do the same thing with Y. I can divide the A or the Y away, goes to the front, and I'm left with A and B. So now we have two identical terms. This is where they, they're talking about the identical terms. A plus B, A plus B. So what we do at the bottom for the last step here is we have X plus Y. So we combine these back together, X plus Y, and then A plus B. This was actually one of the first methods, we're kind of going backwards from the first method, that we use to multiply two binomials. Because um, we have our multipliers x and y, and then we multiply by the whole piece here. So x times a plus b, y times a plus b. Um, so this is just going backwards from one of those very first methods we learned on multiplying a binomial. So you may want to go back and watch that video. Um, I believe that was in section two, if I remember correctly. Um, so you may want to go back and take a look at that video just so you can watch the multiplication process and then maybe the, the backwards division process will make a little more sense um, as well. You know, if, if this is kind of throwing you for a loop a little bit there. Um, all right, so we're going to scooch down. There's also the zero product property. So what, what do I solve? What, what do I solve equations by factoring? Interesting question. Um, for any real number a and b, if a times b equals 0, then a equals 0 or b equals 0, or both a and b equals 0. So what it's saying is if we have an equation equaling 0 and we have a here and we have b here and we're just looking at the term, 3k is a, k plus 10 is b, one of them has to be 0 in order to equal 0 here. So um, what we do in this case is if we have a polynomial equation that is factored, you can set each factor equal to 0 and solve for the unknown. So we're going to say 3k is equal to 0 and k plus 10 is equal to 0. So remember, we have to have it factored. We have to have it equaling 0. So this is factored, meaning that something was pulled out and it's in the front. It's, it's not multiplied in here. Um, and then we just solve. So in this case, I would divide by 3 on both sides. Well, if I divide by 3, I end up with k equals 0. In this one, I'm going to subtract 10 from both sides to solve. So that cancels, and I end up with k equals negative 10. So these are my two answers. I can solve in this way also. So this is how we solve um, a polynomial when we have an equation. So remember, this is just factoring. We, haven't, we didn't introduce equal signs yet. But now this one is the zero product property where we can actually solve for the answer. All right. So I'm going to scooch down here. Whoop. Take a look at these ones. So we are going to factor by grouping and then solve them. So we're going to group them with something that they have in common. So we have a squared and 4a. We have 24 and 6a. So these both have an a. These both can divide into each other. Um, 24 and a can also do that. So, and then a squared and 6 could also be grouped. Um, so there, there might be multiple options on this one. Um, and when we get to the end, if we don't have something identical, then we need to go back and try a different grouping to see if we get a, an identical. If we did do a squared and 6a and 4a and 24, because we could group those as well, we may not get the identical pieces that we need. So let's see, in this one I have a and a and I have 4a. So remember, I'm going to take out the greatest common factor, which in this case is simply just a. I can only divide a away one time. So if I take 1a out, I have one left. If I divide the a away here, I only have 4 plus, oops, help if I put the number in here, so 24 and 6, they can't have any A's divided away because I only have one A, but they can both divide by 6. So I can divide by 6 for both of them. 24 divided by 6, I get 4 plus 6 divided by 6 is A. So remember, we want identical pieces, and they are identical. Just because it's A plus 4 and 4 plus A, they mean 
the same thing. As long as it's all addition or all multiplication in this case, um, so this one's all addition, we can flop, flip flop them around like this. These are still considered identical. We could just switch around and it would be a plus four. So now we're gonna put our factors back together here. So these were our multipliers, a and six, or it's an a, not a nine. And then a plus four. So we have a plus six times a plus nine. So we factored. So then solve. So we say equals zero, and we set each one equal to zero. a plus six equals zero, and a plus four equals zero. I would subtract six from both sides, and I have a equals negative six. Remember those cancel. I subtract four from both sides, and a equals negative four. <coughs> All right. I'm going to go back to red for whatever reason. I like to write this in red. All right, so let's go ahead and, and group this guy. So I'm going to go ahead and group the first ones, and I'm going to group the last ones. Um, it tends to be... Um, I'll say Alex tends to do it that way, but it's not a promise. You may have to rearrange them to group them in a nice way. But for now, I think because we're just beginning out, a lot of the time it's going to be kind of in order the way you should group it. Um, so in this case, we have 8 and 12. Um, so we want to make sure, and I can even do this the way we were doing it on the previous page. I have 8a squared and 12a. If I look at the factors, I would have 2 times 2 times 2. That's 8. If I break that down into its um, prime numbers, and then a times a. 12 would be 2 times 2 times 3 times a. So now I can match a 2, I can match another 2, and I can match an a. So that's my greatest common factor. 2 times 2 is 4, times a is 4a. So I can take 4a out of this, just this first one. That's all we're looking at. Um, we'll go to the second one in a moment. So if I look at what's left over, I have 2a, and then the second one I have 3. Um, and then this one, if you notice, it's already matching. So plus 2a plus 3. So they already match, right? We already have our identical binomial. Remember, there's a 1 here. So when I go to make my first binomial and put these multipliers back, I have 4a plus 1. Again, that's an a. I keep making those look like 9s. Times 2a plus 3. And then we would say equals 0. 4a plus 1 equals 0, and 2a plus 3 equals 0. And then we go through and we start solving these. So we'd subtract 1 from both sides, 4a equals 0. I would divide by 4 on both sides. So a equals 0 because 4 divided by 4 becomes 1. Anything, four, or 0 divided by 4 be, is still 0. So a equals 0 on this one. And then minus 3 Oops, what was I doing? I'm losing my mind. Right on the recording like that. I'm going to go back and fix this. 0 minus 1 is not 0. It is negative 1, crazy person that I am. So now if we divide by 4, we'll get the correct answer here. So we have, this still becomes 1, so we have A equals negative 1, 4. Sorry, I know that's kind of teeny tiny there, but it's negative 1 over 4 because that is not a zero. Um, all right, so now we're going to subtract 3 from both sides. We end up with 2a. 3 minus 3 cancels equals 3, and we divide by 2 on both sides. 2 divided by 2 is 1. a equals negative 3 divided by 2, which is just negative 3 over 2. All right, so we have our two answers there. Um, and you should have... Uh, two answers in this case. Um, this actually kind of lets me know the the degree of the polynomial should actually let you know how many answers you should have. Um, so if I have a squared, I should have two answers or two solutions. Uh, all right, I believe that is all of section 
Do, 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 do. I believe that's all of section five. Let me click here and make sure. Yep, that is all of section five. I will see you in section six.